Hey everybody, Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share my full review of the Digitally Digested segment for the Samsung Galaxy Tab Pro 8.4. This 8.4-inch Android tablet is priced at $399.99. However, at the time of this review, it's currently on sale through Amazon as well as Best Buy for $369.99. With that said, it's still one of the most expensive sub 10 inch tablets on the market. Uh, chief competition, I would say, is the uh, LG G Pad, at least within the realm of Android. And of course, on the iOS aisle, we've got the uh, Retina Mini. But in terms of what you're getting here, Samsung really has put together, in my opinion, one of the best tablets they've ever made. I wish there was a Super AMOLED screen here, but they haven't disappointed me because the 2560 by 1600 resolution display that you're looking at is one of the best I've ever seen. And I don't mean that strictly speaking from a pixel count uh, perspective. We're actually talking about performance, color accuracy, and just a wow factor that isn't provided, in my opinion, in the same manner by any other tablet on the market. So display aside, let's talk about the hardware. You can see the software, KitKat out of the box, latest version of the Android operating system, definitely a good thing. Uh, but you do have Samsung's overlay, which is now no longer known as TouchWiz UI, but Magazine UX. Uh, Flipboard integration is really where it's all at. I'll get to that a little bit later, but when it comes to hardware, you have one of the best uh, processors on the market, a Qualcomm Snapdragon uh, 800, which really puts you at the top of the class when it comes to raw performance in the tablet market. Uh, th uh, you know, three gigs of RAM is what is traditionally found on many of Samsung's uh, Pro models now, uh, specifically the 12.2 edition Note that I've been reviewing. Uh, here we have two gigs of RAM, but I have to say, despite the fact that it doesn't have that, you know, top of the class three gigs that Samsung's been offering, two gigs, definitely more than enough for what you'll be doing with this tablet. And in no way does that hinder performance. Uh, and in all likelihood, Samsung's saving that three gig RAM model uh, for the Note version of this device, because uh, I do believe this is going to be one of the most successful offerings they have in the... Uh, really flood of tablets that they've released in the last six months. So what else is here? Great processor, solid amount of RAM, 16 gigs of internal storage. We have a micro SD card slot for storage expansion up to 64 gigs. I do have a 128 gig card in here right now, but you'll see in a moment it does not resolve all 128 gigs simply because uh, of formatting issues. And that can be addressed down the road, but where things stand right now, 64 gigs is the wall. Uh, it charges via a micro USB port right down here at the bottom, the same one you would use uh, for most likely just about any smartphone. Speaker performance is solid, battery life is good, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connectivity is excellent. For those of you wondering, uh, the Wi-Fi performance really top notch. I'll just go ahead and jump right now directly into uh, Wi-Fi so you can see my current connection a little under 300 there and that is nowhere near my router of course I am on the uh, 5 gigahertz band I do have an AC router this tablet does support AC connectivity while that isn't necessarily a standard for most users yet definitely a nice piece of future proofing uh, to a certain degree in terms of GPS you also have that uh, and overall I think the biggest gripe most users have with Samsung is predominantly to do with their software and I take issue with that simply because I understand where you know users are coming from wanting a stock experience but Samsung has really gone out of their way to create something special here this isn't just bloatware anymore once upon a time TouchWiz was far from what we see it in this product today and uh, the multi uh, screen capability with you know, simple multitasking, which I just brought up before, the multi-window feature, is one of the best examples. You can completely customize this, pretty much do whatever you want. Uh, this doesn't support four-screen uh, splitting like the 12.2-inch uh, Note Pro, but you still get multitasking out of a tablet that is unparalleled. Uh, the LG G-Pad does have multitasking, but not in this form. It's not as clean, it's not as polished, and it just doesn't work as well. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump into some actual functionality. Uh, also, I do want to point out front-facing 2 megapixel camera is decent, and the rear 8 megapixel camera is one of the better ones you will find 
uh, on a tablet. Samsung knows what they're doing there. I'll show the uh, software off a little bit later in this video. Uh, let's start off with some simple web browsing because we all know that's the baseline for tablet performance for most users out there. And incredibly light, uh, very thin, very little bezel. We have physical buttons right here at the bottom, which some users love, some users hate. I like the fact that they don't eat into screen real estate, but when it comes to actual performance, they do often trigger accidental touches. There's no question if you're in landscape, you'll be prone to touching these accidentally. And you'll get used to it over time. So for those of you wondering about whether or not uh, this is an issue having, you know, touch screen buttons as opposed to, you know, baked into the display, soft keys. Yes and no. It really depends on how comfortable you get with the device. The keyboard that Samsung offers is very good. This is not a new thing. Uh, in fact, it's a hallmark for them. You really don't need a keyboard replacement. You also have the ability uh, to do multiple methods of input, whether you want to do actual text. Uh, granted, we don't have the note here, but you could actually just write out whatever you like and it will convert it. So let's do a little bit of web browsing. And you'll see performance is very good. I mean, the Wi-Fi on this thing is absolutely beast, like most of the internals of this tablet. And uh, the only reason I still believe, as I mentioned before, that we don't have three gigs of RAM here is probably because that Note model is somewhere uh, in the oven right now. And eventually we will see it. And that may be the perfect tablet for those of you that are on the fence about this, because that would be the only thing holding me back from actually giving a recommendation to anyone who's interested in this form factor, as well as the best performing tablet on the market. Uh, and that's because if you really do want the Note capability, I have a feeling Samsung is going to deliver on that. Pinch to zoom, incredibly smooth. I mean, this processor delivers exactly what you would expect. Uh, this is not the same chipset you're going to get uh, in some of Samsung's other tablets, the Galaxy Note 10.1 2014 edition, as well as the Note uh, the Note Pro 12.2, both rely on Samsung's own Exynos chip. Here you do have that Snapdragon processor. This is also something that uh, Samsung integrates into a lot of the LTE, uh, you know, the wireless models. Again, this is a Wi-Fi only tablet. Uh, but overall performance is brilliant. I mean, video playback, I haven't had any issues. Uh, I haven't really tried to push this to playback 4K, even though of course we don't have a native 4K screen, but Everything just works really well. I have nothing bad to say about this tablet. Battery life is probably its only Achilles, but keep in mind the form factor is crazy. Uh, with battery, you're looking at somewhere between six and eight hours, depending on usage, uh, but that's very good for its class. I think if you uh, really keep screen brightness cranked up, which right now we are, I didn't mean to do that, but we are at full brightness. Or no, we're not, excuse me, uh, a little bit under. Uh, now we are at full, but negligible difference for what you'll actually be able to see on screen because uh, it was negligible for my eye in person. Uh, basically the point is is that battery life will come in at around six hours I would say if you're really uh, you know juicing this thing. Uh, if you're conservative and you really try to maintain battery life you will get more out of it like any other device uh, but there are limitations in the battery size inherently. Uh, in terms of performance though I think it's obvious uh, with web, uh, web browsing, you're not going to have an issue, which is expected because, again, you have one of the best mobile processors out there. Uh, when it comes to A15 chips, you're not going to do much better. Everything that is in the same class is literally right on par or a little bit beneath it. So uh, the only downside here is that the Snapdragon processor does consume a little bit more juice, not as battery efficient as Samsung's own Exynos. Uh, now, with regard to lag, a lot of people ask about lag with the uh, even top tier Galaxy models. And in my experience, it's really not a concern. Uh, it, you know, it's all a matter of how far you're pushing it. People are usually referring to performance in the stock UI uh, which in this case is that magazine UX, which I'm going to get to in a moment. And I don't really find it to be an issue here at all. I know what users were talking about with the Note 10.1 uh, 10 2014 edition, but even there, it isn't that bad. You're talking about an incredi incredibly powerful tablet that does far more, even in this form factor, than anything else that you could compare it to. Uh, and you'll see that when I start multitasking in a moment. I'm trying to think of any other uh, websites... See how quick search works here. Touchscreen is very responsive, by the way. Not that that would be something that I would have negative input about. And really, 
everything just works as it should. Scrolling is great. And the Wi-Fi, again, is one of the best performing elements of this tablet. I mean, uh, AC connectivity for some may be a gimmick, but when it comes to raw performance, it's here. I, I have not seen a tablet that has beat this uh, just in general web browsing as well as downloading any sort of content. Uh, the Wi-Fi performance is solid. And I have you know seen some reports of users having issues uh, with Wi-Fi, but uh, overall, if you do have a problem, go ahead and exchange it. Make sure you obviously have done business with a reliable uh, retailer to begin with that will actually support that return. Let me go ahead and jump to that magazine UX interface because it's a big point of uh, issue with the device. You know, this is something where I know there are a lot of users out there that wish this was a Nexus device and didn't have Samsung's touch on it. But I have to say, this is a pretty good overlay considering what TouchWiz is known for. So we've got this Flipboard uh, window. There are essentially three pages, your main page right here, home screen. Uh, you can customize, you can create as many as you'd like. Uh, and then you have your business end, which essentially is giving you your calendar, uh, quick access to hang home office, which is basically uh, the Samsung answer to Microsoft Office, and it is a legitimate one at that, which is another reason that this is one of the best tablets on the market. Of course, you can find that same Office suite across all of Samsung's Pro tablets, but in this form factor, it, there's just nothing like it. And I'll keep saying that through the course of this video because this tablet is a stunner head to toe. Uh, quick access to email and, of course, scheduling uh, on the calendar there and then news. So you customize this as well. You do have to log in. Uh, you get a lot of perks with this tablet. If you haven't seen my perks video, uh, Samsung, at least on their high-end models, tends to make sure that you're going to get some subscription time, some FaceTime, I'll call it, with some pay content. And that's because they want you to actually desire it and eventually become uh, you know, a subscriber to all of the different uh, services, whether we're talking about Bloomberg Business Week. Uh, New York Times, uh, I mean, they give a tremendous amount of subscriptions in terms of entertainment content. Uh, Hulu, I mean, I'm not going to go through all that now. There's a Perks video that I've done specifically for it. But when it comes to news, Flipboard is what they're leaning on. In fact, most of the entire UX interface is all about Flipboard. So I'll go ahead and jump into this article, uh, or at least what was the article, about Office finally making it to iOS, which I kind of laugh at. Uh, but, you know, here we have Hank Holm, which... Hancom really does make the entire point moot. I mean, the fact that Apple has been waiting for this for so long is ironic to me, but, you know, then again, Android doesn't have it, but really what Samsung's put together in their pro line with Hancom makes that uh, no longer an issue at all. Uh, but content and how you get to it here, very simple. Uh, in terms of that lag that people are always talking about, you know, can it keep up? You can see I'm swiping there and it didn't resolve instantly, it's pretty close. I mean, I don't see any issues here. Anyone who's really looking for the lag is nitpicking. We are loading a little bit, can't keep up with me, but uh, you, you have to have realistic expectations. I have no better way of really characterizing what I conceive as you know illegitimate uh, criticism of a tablet that really is best in class. And this applies to all of Samsung's uh, Pro tablets right now because they all run on basically identical hardware. This is one of the few that has that Snapdragon 800, which also makes it unique. Besides the fact that it has, you know, the highest pixel density on the market, one of the brightest screens on the market, one of the lightest form factors, uh, even when compared to something like the LG G Pad, which is three quarters of a pound, here you're, you know, still substantially less. In terms of multitasking, which is a beautiful part of Samsung's OS, and I have to point it out because it's critical. Uh, you do have the ability to say, go ahead and grab your browser, throw it on screen, hand-holding, as always, I always leave this on, I keep the experience stock, so all of you that watch my videos know exactly what to experience, I haven't cleaned things up, made it look better, and then given you a job later, this is what it's going to be like for you taking this out of the box and using it for the first time, even though clearly I've spent a lot more than first time use with it. Uh, so I've got the browser open, let's say I wanted to open another browser. We now have split screen. And then very easily, turn the tablet around, bring it into landscape. I'm gonna go ahead and make this a tighter shot anyway, get a little bit more personal with the Tab Pro 8.4. And now we're working in split screen, and it is very responsive. I mean, 
right there, I fooled it. But generally speaking, I mean, I remember the first time I dealt with Samsung and split screen and, you know, there was like a five second delay almost. And now things are instantaneous. And this sort of productivity, while it may seem insignificant, in the tablet world is pretty gigantic. I mean, I can't tell you any way of natively doing this on any other tablet, Android or otherwise, uh, forget about iOS, that you're going to be able to actually get things done, accomplish work, uh, compare things, do, do practical things that tablets generally don't do because they are, for the most part, toys. Uh, you know, they're not really our direct pathway to information necessarily, but they're a convenient one. Samsung wants to change that. They want to replace computers even though they make them, and this is a great example. I mean, so portable, and I I'm going to continue to praise it because I've been waiting for a device like this, and Samsung has done it. Uh, now, if you were working with a larger screen, you'd be able to multitask even more. Let's say I wanted to open up some Office type stuff. I'd be able to open even more windows, but we are limited by the real estate here. You can see this is loading up right now because uh, I actually haven't launched uh, the Hancomb version of Excel on here, but that's what's loading up because you do get equivalents of PowerPoint, Excel, Word. I'm going to show that to you in a moment, but once this loads up, it's really installing clearly. You will see that we've got Office running side by side with web content, and I don't really need to explain to anybody why that is critical or useful for just about anybody, student, professional, or just the casual user that wants best-in-class performance and capability from something that isn't a form factor that PCs still haven't taken on. Even with all the tablets now that are great out there running Windows 8, uh, very few, actually none, come in this form factor. So finally, we've got HCell open, and I can create a new document that easily. Uh, had it been installed, that would have been instantaneous. So you've got, you know, basically Excel now running right here. And while most people would look at this form factor and say, there's no way that this is going to be some sort of office replacement machine for me, I have to tell you, depending on what you actually do, it may very well be. Uh, that rear camera, fi uh, 8 megapixel with LED flash is relatively solid. I will get to the software, as I mentioned. You've got that rubberized uh, texture on the back that's great. They didn't have this last gen, uh, even with the Galaxy Note 10.1-2014 edition. We had more of a uh, plastic. This is rubber texture that really is grippy. You're not going to lose this. Uh, so really like the design here. Uh, they also really minimized, or I should say smoothed out the silver finish here. Instead of having ridges, we now have just what looks to be a metallic frame, which I personally like a lot more than what they had been using uh, since the Galaxy Note 3. Uh, in terms of that micro SD card slot, I want to point out right now something because I can't forget this. While it's great that we've got expandable storage on this uh, dynamo of a tablet, it is near impossible to remove anything from that slot, uh, as well as insert the card. And this is a criticism. Uh, anyone who follows my channel, subscribers, you know that I'm honest about this stuff. Uh, as much as I can praise this tablet, where I see an issue, I'm going to actually address it. And right now, I'm not even going to try to take that 128 gig card out because it's buried. Um, if you have large hands, small hands, it won't matter. Uh, even if you have long nails, be careful. You may break them because this thing is really recessed, which is good and bad. You know, it's not going to pop out accidentally. It does even have that cover. But um, yeah, it shouldn't be a struggle. And that's what it is right now to get it. Let's see if I can. I'll give it a shot. Yes, you know, there's no way. Uh, I <laughs> Even on first attempt right there, it's not happening. I'm going to try one more time. I got it. So I got the click. I mean, I'm not trying to be dramatic about this. There's the 128 gig card. Not that that's going to resolve so well. Great card, by the way. Really, really great. And I'm going to try to put it back in because it is part of the demo here. But the fact of the matter is I've reviewed a lot of Samsung tablets. This is the first one where... I struggle to actually get the card in and out and uh, yeah so something to be aware aware of almost every time I do this some sort of damage occurs either to me or the tablet uh, as ridiculous as that sounds uh, but let's get down to business here so I've shown you know what you can do in terms of multitasking split screen works beautifully everything is just great you know so 
this is a multitasking machine despite its form factor. Uh, it looks like it's not going to be the strongest tablet in, in the biz, but it really is. Uh, so looks are deceiving when it comes to the Tab Pro 8.4. And by the way, this entire list of different apps that you can you know, multitask with can be edited. You can just that easily go ahead and pick other applications uh, as well as create actual side-by-side uh, -side scenarios, which is pretty cool. Show that right now. You can see uh, creating a paired window. And also Samsung's smart enough to know that when we do have a multi-window environment up, we probably need a floating keyboard. So you get that little mini floating keyboard, uh, which is really functional and works well. And even though the keys may look tiny, I can assure you, uh, since you probably already own a smartphone, maybe even a Samsung one, you're going to feel right at home even in this form factor. Uh, but let me go ahead and shut this down. And I'm literally closing everything out by doing that, for the most part. And just to demonstrate, I mean, this is where people look for the slowdown, you know. How is it keeping up with my finger? And you can see it's not. It's, so even, you know, people who like to say the Exynos is the problem, it's clear it's still the software. But this to me is not lag. I feel like people who think, oh, I've got to go like that, that's ridiculous. Granted, does it happen in my video? Sure. People actually still, you know, believe that to be some sort of benchmark. But when it comes to real world use, this thing is stellar. It kills just about everything. And I see just about everything. So uh, if there was ever a time that I could give you some good advice, uh, the Snapdragon 800 is still a beast, even though, frankly, uh, it isn't, I won't say long in the tooth, it's been on the market for a while, it's not old yet, but it's certainly not new anymore. And inherently in this business, like any other, but especially in this business, uh, there is going to be a better chip uh, right around the corner. In fact, there's plenty of talk already. So while this is best on the market right now, with time, of course, the processor uh, is going to age. Will it still be relevant for another year? Absolutely. Uh, and that's because just what you're seeing me do here in terms of performance is what keeps it completely relevant. Uh, when it comes to software that Samsung's included here, beyond the UX experience that I was uh, showing, we've got the typical Google suite of applications that you would expect to see. Nothing new there. We also have a Samsung suite of software uh, beyond that. And that's because as I mentioned, perks before, Samsung, beyond incorporating pro, you know, oriented software like WebEx, remote PC, e-meeting, the Hancom office suite, uh, Dropbox, I won't call a pro feature because anyone clearly could want to use Dropbox, but uh, they've really made sure to put together quite a bit. Now, they do have their own application store. They often give credit to it. I don't recommend using this. Samsung, Samsung, of course, does, and that's because it is their brand, and I understand that. They have every right to want to incorporate it. They sell, you know, most or a very large portion of the world's tablets out there. Uh, but when it comes to the actual software that they are throwing on, as I mentioned, they do have their own uh, little app drawer. And most of those are core functions of the tablet, whether we're, you know, we're talking about base functions, really, uh, like the alarm, the calculator, that's where they are if you're wondering. S-Voice, which is Samsung's answer to Siri uh, and just a personal assistant. I don't use it. Most people I know don't use it, but Samsung still clinging to it. And, you know, uh, they're allowed to do what they want. Uh, Side Sync is there. Um, basically, you know, simple things. Knox for security, for those of you that are worried about uh, security with your tablet. Uh, they do have their own video player. Uh, and of course music player, own file management, which uh, is perfectly fine, and I'll show you some of that right now, uh, because it does a serviceable job. All of the menus on this tablet are clean, well laid out. You're not going to have a problem using this as a computer substitute, and that's what's really nice about Samsung's maturation in their overlay. If you're going to be stuck with a software overlay, let it be a company that's been spending a lot of money and a lot of time trying to perfect it, even though it still isn't perfect. So I've got uh, video files here off that 128 gig SD card. Uh, none of them are resolving, uh, but we can switch back and forth between you know the device storage as well as SD. And you can see it also categorizes content, and we have apps as well to utilize. 
Uh, in terms of other software, Hancomb Viewer, I've mentioned it many times already, or I should say the Hancomb Office Suite, and it really does give you a tremendous amount of flexibility. Right now with this viewer, you can view any Office document, essentially. It's pulling up what's on uh, the actual tablet itself. Uh, but more importantly, you can create any type of Office document, Excel, PowerPoint even, for those of you that thought maybe PowerPoint wasn't possible with this, it is. Uh, so those are just advantages that you'll only find right now with the Pro line of tablets from Samsung. Their own memo software, again, this just makes me want to see a Note version of this tablet. Um, they're telling me an update is required, but simple, straightforward, it's going to give you the ability uh, to create a memo and it does exactly that. Stock keyboard comes up. Of course you can replace the keyboard like any other Android device. You can also replace UX. The entire magazine UX, if you want to have Nova Launcher on here or any other launcher of preference, you certainly can do it. I know plenty of people that have because they really don't want this. Uh, quick launch right into a Word document is that easy. And if I wanted to multitask Again, and let's say do some PowerPoint here. I don't know why I would be doing both, but there you have it. You're cr now creating PowerPoint on the right and authoring a Word document on the left. So this is, you know, it looks like your traditional tablet, um, but it's a lot more. And it really does set the bar very high for the competition. Uh, the price is high to match. I mentioned that from the beginning of the video. I'll be the first to tell you this is very expensive for any tablet uh, because tablets also lose value faster than any other piece of electronics uh, on the market, iPad included. The Apple uh, cannot hold up anymore the way it used to. You know, uh, there once upon a time, Apple products uh, were insulated. Those days are over. Uh, so this is expensive now. In a year, in six months, it's going to be less. Uh, my video, this review will probably still be around, and I will still say that this is a will be an even better value than uh, when the prices come down. Because even though new tech will be around, it'll be more about marketing than necessary performance for the end user. Uh, so, if you find that you know the limitations uh, of what you know a tablet has to offer, and if it actually matches your needs. Uh, then this is going to make you very happy because it kills every tablet out there, again, that I've actually uh, demoed. Let's go ahead, jump back at that software because I do want to round that out. Uh, the remote PC, I'm not going to demo, but it's solid. Uh, one thing I haven't spoken about is the infrared remote control that you have with this tablet, like all of Samsung's, and it's not any kind of game breaker uh, you know, or game changer as I just take you around the tablet, but it is an important feature on a form factor like this because this is really light, really easy to hold, and definitely far better to use as a universal remote than probably any other form factor except maybe a 7-inch. Uh, you can see we've got the 35 millimeter headphone jack at the top. I just wanted to take you around the body of this tablet. Uh, the uh, power button right there, volume rocker, there's that infrared uh, blaster that I've been talking about. I'm going to show you the software in a moment. And then the charging port at the bottom right there, uh, flanked by the stereo speakers, which are very loud. I'll be demoing those as well. Don't worry. And that is it. Very minimal body in terms of, or I should say, clean industrial design. It looks just like the Galaxy Note 3, but even better, in my opinion. Uh, and even on the, the simple rotations here, uh, going from one orientation to another, you can see performance. It just, it's good. Uh, anybody who thinks this tablet is lagging, I'd like to see uh, the perfect tablet that they prefer to use. <clears throat> now, in terms of the software that I was mentioning before, uh, which is the uh, Watch On uh, Companion software for the remote control, it really is a nice thing to have. Most people think it's a gimmick. Uh, but basically what it does is not only give you the universal remote capability, I'm going to skip on that, but it also gives you access to your entire guide. So you've got a visual guide, you know, tied right into whatever cable provider you use. 
so that you have a guide, not only a universal remote. So everything in one place, really a smart remote. Uh, and yeah, it works exactly uh, as you would desire. So I'll just throw one in here. And you'll see it's going to populate what's on. So very cool. It's not new, but for those of you that are new to Samsung, this is new to you. And I wanted to share it because it is a value-added feature, in my opinion, that is overlooked by many. Uh, backing out of this, and of course you get the remote control feature as well, uh, but you have to set that up in your devices, and I'm not going to walk you through that here today. Uh, the widget on screen, by the way, is stock as well. That's your general clock weather widget. Uh, also incorporates your events from your calendar. You can throw stock symbols on there. Pretty much quick access to information, which is what this whole Flipboard UI is all about, if that ha wasn't abundantly clear uh, so far. So quick launching, quick access. Samsung w knows that tablets like this, all mobile tablets, uh, iOS and Android alike, and Windows are about quicker access to information than what PCs traditionally deliver. Um, video playback. I did install MX Player because it plays back everything, and I'll demonstrate that right now. Some 1080p shot uh, with the very camcorder that I'm recording this video, uh, basically filed in here. You can see I got a nice boatload of videos, but let's take a look at something worth watching, which is a sample I uh, uploaded just the other day. Little uh, sunrise action. I believe this is it right here. And this is really going to show off the display as well as my fingerprints. Remember, this is raw. This is not converted. This is straight out of, uh, excuse me, the A7R. I said the camcorder I'm using here, the camera I'm using. This is the A7R uh, with the SEL 2470Z. This isn't going to do anything for audio purposes, but again, I can assure you that even though those are mounted at the bottom of those speakers, they are very loud. Seems like just about every tablet maker has learned at this point that if they aren't at least loud, they're going to hear about it. And I'm not trying to be cute. After all, everything here is ad-libbed, if you didn't know that already. For those of you that subscribe, I think you already know that. And I have to say that when I review photos on here, for those of you that are, you know, photographers, photo enthusiasts, hobbyists, you're going to love the way they look, whether it's on this 8.4-inch display or any of the Pro line that have that 2560 by 1600 resolution. Your photos are really going to come to life because of that extra resolution. And that includes this 1080p video. I mean, it's stunning. see if I have another video there that's worth looking at. Take a look at one more. I think they're all the same uh, content essentially there in the sunrise. Yeah, and then we we go to videos. But I will show you uh, a still as well from here so you can see what I was talking about exactly uh, in terms of that quality. Not that I have any great stills on here. Uh, because that wasn't the purpose. It was really more for video because uh, I'm just amazed by what this thing does with video. And I did need to use MX Player. If you use the stock video player, that is not going to work. Remember that. Uh, but just jumping right into the SD memory. Let's go into the still images here. And just to give you a really clean example... I would say this is a very good one. Of course, that would happen, right? The hand holding comes up. But I mean, just outstanding. Granted, didn't hurt that the sunrise was gorgeous, but I mean, this is fantastic. Remember, this is the A7R with uh, that Zeiss uh, zoom, so you're seeing... Uh, an amazing lens camera pairing, but still, this display is what allows it to look that good, in my opinion. And you wouldn't get that uh, on another tablet. This simply doesn't look as good uh, on just about any other tablet that I could show it to you on. Uh, show you another shot. 
All right, this time I'm actually shutting it off. But there you go. Again, I mean, it's just we don't have the Super AMOLED. We don't have uh, that pop. But boy, I just don't know what else to compare this to. It's like if we weren't going to have a Super AMOLED, Samsung made sure to try to fool us is what I can tell you because this display is gorgeous. So it's not just about the resolution. Anyone that has followed my channel uh, over the years knows that I'm, I don't buy into that. Certainly, resolution is a good thing as long as our eyes can actually differentiate it uh, and decipher it. In this case, they can. And I assure you that if you get this in your hands, you'll be blown away by the screen. And that may be enough for many uh, to be sold on this. Forget about the processor, because most people don't walk around talking about what the processor is and whether it's quad-core, quad core, dual-core, or A15, or it has a, a power saver core. I know I discuss these things, but the average person that wants a great lightweight tablet like this doesn't care about that. If you've made it this far through the video, though, I know you do. And that's the good news, is that you are actually getting it. Uh, so would I like to see NFC? Would I like to see wireless charging? Sure. But maybe that'll come in the note uh, that comes in this form factor. I doubt it, but I do think, as I've mentioned before, we'll get that extra uh, gig of RAM. We probably also may not get the Snapdragon, though. Maybe an Exynos. Or it'll be a refresh. Uh, let's hope for that, because that would be just an amazing tablet. But this is a continued sign that Samsung knows exactly what they're doing, and they just get better each time around. I mean, that is the thing. Whether you love or hate Samsung, give them credit where it's due. They're changing the game. Once upon a time, Apple was the only player that could do that. Now Samsung is. Uh, and that's the truth. Whether you're an Apple fan or an Android fan, it doesn't really matter. Forget about Windows. I'm not even going to bring them into the mix on this because Microsoft is still uh, a good distance behind. But let's go ahead, jump back. I uh, want to show a little bit of gaming, a little bit of dead trigger, Choplifter HD, give you an idea of what performance is like from the Adreno uh, chipset that you're getting in there. It's top of the line in terms of graphics for mobile processing and uh, pretty much in line with what you're going to get from every competing product, including the LG G-Pad, which is so much less, by the way, folks. If you are looking for the affordable tablet in this form factor with great specifications, this isn't it, if I didn't make that clear. The LG G-Pad is. Uh, let's go ahead and play. And this isn't a very demanding game, but it's a fun one, it's popular, it looks good, and with this display and hardware, it shines. Somebody's having a snack. Too bad it won't let me shoot. The game does do a little bit of playing itself here. What do we have here? Keep in mind, this is a free title for those of you that are curious. Hey, repair that barricade and I'll let you in. Reminded me of Rust a little bit. So I think that should give you a good idea. Let's jump to Choplifter HD, and if this doesn't tell you how performance is that we're just jumping in and out of uh, games like this, this game is definitely a uh, heavier load, by the way, than uh, Dead Trigger. I don't know what will, because we've still got things running in the background, I might add. And by the way, on that point, Samsung did fall in line with 
Google, they had a little talk about these buttons, so they at least are now conforming to the standards, even though they're still not on screen. And you can see when I hold the tablet here, a perfect example that if I just were to hold it, I'd be hitting those capacitive buttons, which is problematic. But I think a very small uh, issue to deal with in light of basically gaining the display surface area because I would much rather have screen real estate, but everybody has their own personal preference. So let's go ahead and get going. Fingerprints. Anyway, I think that pretty much demonstrates uh, the gaming prowess of this uh, tablet, but anything on the platform you're going to throw at it, it'll be able to handle. Uh, it's not a Tegra 4, uh, but it's still very competent when it comes to being a gaming machine. So if you're looking for a little mobile console with an incredibly high-res display to match, again, you've got it. Uh, battery life, as I mentioned before, you probably have been watching it through the course of the review. That is, you know, one area, but this thing is so thin, I, I don't know how you can really still, you know, critique that and call it a compromise uh, beyond what it is. And uh, you got to wonder how they even fit the battery in this form factor to get that six to eight hours of life. Uh, charge time, also not great. It could be faster, but I could say that about just about every device on the market. It's not an overnighter like the 12.2 Note, but it's a close second, so it definitely is going to take some time to charge. Uh, but that's pretty much uh, the same with every device in this class. Uh, in terms of other things to note about software, uh, I did not show the camera. Definitely want to show that to you. Of course, because the SD card is in there, is in there I'm getting this question. But I just wanted to show uh, shooting modes and basically what to expect. So we have settings up in the left corner, which gives you access to uh, control the actual quality, the size of the photo, uh, burst mode, uh, tap to take pictures. You can turn that on and off, face detection, metering mode, uh, as well as stabilization. Within the video mode, you can also uh, manipulate the quality there. And this is something that Samsung is doing over and over again in tablets, not anything new. Uh, stabilization as well. Another feature, of course. And then geolocation, reviewing your photos. These are all features that, again, Samsung has been doing. But if you're new to Samsung, you'll be happy to know that these options are here because uh, many tablets throw on cameras and don't really give you a reason to use them. Samsung wants you to use this camera. Now, do I recommend using it? Well, your best camera is often the one that you have with you. So I guess if this is what you've got, use it. Uh, but otherwise, I recommend getting a camera. In terms of uh, capture, that's the button right there. You can see it just took a shot, shutter sound. Uh, if we want to switch to video mode, uh, that's it. No switching, you just touch, you're recording. In terms of what mode you're in, you can see it's listing auto there in the upper right corner, and that's because that's literally the mode that we're in. Samsung gives you a bevy of options of uh, scene settings, uh, whether we're talking about uh, panorama, sports, uh, auto, which is what we were on, beauty face, uh, best photo, best face. Boy, a lot of vanity in here, but that's not anything new. Uh, this is something that basically every camera manufacturer does. Not necessarily the best face, but boy, there are some interesting ones out there. 
um, from different camera manufacturers. But it's nice that Samsung gives you all of this. This is very full featured. This is not something you're going to find from basically anyone else in the tablet business right now. So I give Samsung a lot of credit for integrating this. Um, the HDR one, I mean, these are, for most average users, these are, you know, the filters, the options that they probably don't even use on their cameras if they have cameras. So nice to have them here because as I mentioned before, this could end up being that person's camera. So definitely good to have all these options uh, and the camera's pretty full featured. If you wanna switch uh, between the front facing and rear camera, that's how you're gonna do it right there next to the settings cog. Uh, and uh, that's pretty much it. It's now showing that we're in uh, night mode. That's because it's dark. I'm gonna go ahead and jump back home uh, the contacts, straightforward, syncs up with your uh, Google contacts. Nothing really to tell about that. Uh, but overall, I really do like this tablet, if that hasn't become abundantly clear through the course of this video. And that's why I'm spending so much time on it, is because I really have been waiting, since Samsung announced uh, several years ago that they were going to eventually make a tablet in this class with a Super AMOLED, this was the device I was waiting for. Unfortunately, as we know, the AMOLED didn't come with it but they really didn't disappoint in any way. I think my biggest issue with it is that SD card slot, which may sound ridiculous, but it's almost a perfect product. And when you get this close, for something like that to be off is sad. Uh, one thing I haven't touched on is quality control. So let's talk about that. When it comes to build, this thing is top notch. Even though it isn't metal, it isn't heavy, I don't know why you'd necessarily want any of that. So the plastic build is still really solid and it's definitely uh, more weighty than you might think despite the fact that it's not, you know, again, metal based. The rubber backing, as I mentioned before when I gave that tour, fantastic. Uh, the stitch I didn't like in previous generations, but it's really uh, minimal and far from offensive. Uh, and essentially, as far as I'm concerned, this thing is well appointed. I mean, all around, it looks good. It's a nice device. And it's not often that something that has looks like this has the performance to match. Uh, and even though they could have gone with USB 3.0, uh, I'm glad that they stuck with the micro USB here. The standard is still important to me, at least. Um, until USB 3.0 jacks are everywhere in terms of like they integrated into the 12.2 inch version of this tablet, uh, it's still not a technical advantage for the majority of users. Peripherals uh, with a USB dongle, you know, a host adapter, you can hook up a bevy of different devices to this. Keep in mind, you do have Bluetooth 4.0, so uh, you can also utilize that for all sorts of wireless devices. Uh, but really, a great tablet, incredibly light. I mean, the LG G pad at three quarters of a pound is light. This thing weighs less. We're looking at, I think it's 0 0.6 something and change. So a little over a half a pound. This thing is bonkers. And all that computing power, I mean, um, again, for the price, it is a relative bargain, especially when you think about what smartphones cost. This thing becomes far more palatable than first appearance would lend itself to. So uh, overall, a great tablet. And uh, right now, I can't think of anything that beats it. Uh, people want to compare this to things like the Nexus 7. That's a joke. Uh, or the, uh, the Tegra Note, also a joke. Uh, the only tablet this can really be compared to right now, as I mentioned before, is the LG G Pad 8.3, which I've already done a comparison on, uh, as well as, of course, the iPad Mini. Ultimately, it will inherently be compared to that, even though I think both this and the LG G Pad simply destroy uh, both the first and retina version of the Mini. And that's because of simple operating system advantages. Uh, but here you have it, basically the best tablet right now, sub 10 inches. And again, something that I think many people will, will argue is the best tablet on the market. And that's because I don't know where else you're gonna find something like this. I really don't. Uh, the Flipboard stuff I could live without. I think a lot of you could live without the Flipboard stuff. And that's because while it looks pretty, it's not everybody's favorite. But the good news is you're not forced to use it. This isn't Apple. You can get rid of it. Ironic that Job's face popped up as I said that. But this is smooth. You know, all the talk of lag right now, until I said that, it's working well. And trust me, Samsung's aware of that critique and criticism, and they take it to heart, and they want this to be the flagship it is. So uh, right now, this is, as I've mentioned over and over, 
one of the best pieces of hardware in the tablet business that I've ever seen. Uh, and if I could change anything, it would be that SD card slot, maybe even uh, give the tablet a little more bezel, believe it or not. I know it's great that it's got these dimensions, I mean, amazing form factor, but there's no question in landscape, like I said before, inherently you're going to hit some buttons accidentally holding it. It's just going to happen. And uh, sometimes it won't affect what you're doing, but sometimes it will. And when it comes to that stock software, it's not so heavy. Like I said before, most of it is really about productivity. Samsung realized if they're going to throw software on there, make it stuff people are going to identify with a differentiation of brand and quality. So they've done a lot more of that. I didn't touch on the Scrapbook app because I have in the past on other uh, Samsung tablets. And it's really uh, not important, frankly, uh, in my opinion. It's convenient. It allows you to do exactly that to Scrapbook. But this is all about the productivity that I've been mentioning over and over again. Uh, and that's what Samsung hopes to achieve, is to get business and student customers alike on board with this form factor. Uh, I also know that they, Samsung realizes that this is a very popular form factor for ladies out there. And that's understandable. I mean, this is smaller, but you know, being above and beyond the seven inch class has some tremendous advantages. You know, if you're gonna compare this uh, to a seven inch tablet, it's night and day. Seven inches is gonna look cramped and compact compared to the screen real estate you're getting here or on any other eight inch, uh, or I should say eight inch class tablet like uh, the 8.3 G-pad or this. So really, this is just one of the best. I can't, there's no other way of putting it. Samsung's outdone themselves. I hope they continue to do this. These are the type of tablets that everybody uh, out there wants to see, use, and own at the end of the day. Uh, so overall, I can, without any hesitation, if it's not clear in you know, the 50 plus minutes of this video, recommend this tablet to everyone. And that's because it's built well, performs well, uh, and it's just a stunner. There's no one that's gonna pick this up and say, ugh, what is this? It's ugly. It doesn't work right. There will still be some that will say lag, but uh, that's inherent with every device. There are no perfect devices. But uh, yeah, it's just, again, one of the best tablets I've ever seen. And if it speaks to where Samsung is going, I'm hoping to see a note like this soon with even better uh, hardware specifications, as crazy as that is to imagine. So good stuff here, whether you're gaming, working, just enjoying the web, your content, uh, or Samsung's built-in perks. Right now, the Galaxy Tab uh, Pro 8.4 is the one to own, in my opinion. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. And of course, as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.